Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. Hello. Uh, welcome back to our channel. So today we just want to quickly show you how we cope with the stairs in our house going up and down. You might think that you don't need this transfer if you live in a well-adapted house, but if you're out and about or at a friend's house who has stairs, you may want to go up and down. So it's a really important transfer to know. So let's get to it. So, like with any transfer, you first want to get your wheelchair as close to the where you're going as possible. You want to make sure your feet are off the foot plate and then get ready to go by sliding forward in your chair. So, slide forward in my chair, make sure my feet are lined up. Now, with stairs, obviously there's lots of different places you can aim for. If you're not very confident with your transfer, you might want to aim for the bottom step. Personally, what I find easier is to aim for the second step because that's the closest height to my wheelchair and it's a fairly reasonable distance to cover and it saves you a step once you get going. So to get going, I get myself to the corner of my chair, make sure my feet are okay, make sure I'm lined up and I put my hand on the step above where I'm going to. Two reasons. First, I don't end up sitting on my hand when I get there and secondly, I've got a little bit more height which helps me maintain the height over the transfer. So I then put one fist on my chair where I am, one hand on the step and then I'm gonna lift I'm gonna duck my head forward to keep my bum up, and then I'm gonna twist my body away from the stairs as that will to swing my bum towards the step. Okay, ready? Go. Like that. Now, once you're on the step, you want to sort your legs out because they're probably twisted up everywhere. Okay, so now you're on the stairs, the first thing you need to be careful of is not slipping down. And this is quite easily done because you, if you can't feel your bum, and because the stairs are quite narrow. Um, so make sure you're always supporting yourself. So now we need to go up the stairs. There's two uh, main methods to do this that I like to use. The main one I like to use is putting one hand up on the banister, if your staircase allows it, and one hand on the step above where you're going to. It's quite difficult on these stairs because they're so narrow, but all staircases are different. So you'll have to trial and error and see what works best for you. For this first step, however, the banister doesn't really come down low enough for me to get my arm on it effectively. So I'm going to have to use the other technique, which is to put one hand on the step where you are and one hand on the step above. Again, because the staircase is quite narrow, this is quite difficult to do. So actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit. And for the very first step, I'm actually going to use the wheelchair again. So I'm going to have one hand on the wheelchair, one hand on this step. I'm going to lift myself up and then try and push my bum back by putting my head forwards. So push myself up push my head forwards to get my bum onto the step. Ready? Like that. And straighten up. So at this point, the spasms like to come out and they actually pull me forwards and try to knock me down the stairs. Oh no. If you want to find out more about spasms, click on the video up here. So from this point on, it gets quite a lot harder because not only are you pulling yourself up, but you're having to pull the weight of your legs up as well but I can now use the banister because I'm high enough to be able to get my arm onto it. So you've got a few choices at this point. If you're by yourself and you're feeling strong, you can just heave yourself up. If you've got a bit of balance and stuff to hold on to, you can try and um, pull your legs up onto the step as you go. If you can get your legs up one step, that makes your knees bent and means you've got less weight to pull up. I struggle a bit with that because I've got less balance, so I just go for the heave method. So. I'm gonna put one hand on the step above again, one hand now up on the banister, and the extra height of the banister helps a lot with getting up the step. And then we're gonna do the same again. And up. So, that's the principle of it. Let's do a couple more just so that you can see it in action. So this is a very strenuous transfer. So there's a few things you need to consider as you're going up. The first is to be careful of your shoulders. If you feel your shoulder hurting, then stop. There's no point overdoing it because that will put you out for a while. The second thing is, as you're going up, you want to be careful to try and not shear your bum on the edge of the step. It's quite easy to do if you're just sort of dragging yourself up. So try and get a lift and then go back. So this is a really difficult transfer. So let's talk about how we can make it a bit easier. 
Now, personally, I very rarely do this when I'm the only one in the house. So there's normally someone around who I can ask for help. So I'll show you how to do it with a bit of help now. So like I said earlier, one of the hardest things is when your legs are dragging behind, they're pulling you down and it makes it a lot harder to go up. So the first thing your assistant can do is bring your legs up a couple of steps so that they're bent. And that means you're only lifting yourself up and you're not having to drag your legs up behind you. So Claire, do you want to do that for me? There you go. So just one tip is to put your hands on their feet mm -hmm. because if you're like Craig and you have spasms, sometimes your feet can fly up the stairs and drag back down. So if you just put your hands here, it will stop them falling off. And another advantage of having your feet up like this is your bum is being pushed back into the stair, so you're not, you're less likely to get slide down a stair while you're doing this. So it just makes you more stable. So like this, I can then just move on to do the transfer like I was doing before, and it just makes it a lot easier. There you go, that was much Ooh, easier. Spasm, can't and then bend the leg. <laughs> Claire would then bend my leg up again. So one thing that you might find is if the leg is spasming, when you try and lift it up and you actually can't, it's, it's resisting. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait for the spasm to stop and then lift it. Yep. There we go. And if we just do one more. Yeah, and that's definitely a lot easier like that. So if you're struggling with that and your assistant is feeling strong, another way they can help is by actually picking up your legs altogether because this just takes even more weight off. Now, although I can do it by myself, this is the way that we tend to do it because it puts a lot less strain on your shoulders. There's no point forcing yourself to do something hard just because you can. Always take the easiest option as you can because it's better for your joints. So, Claire, can you grab my legs? Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that legs can be quite heavy. So remember to bend your legs and push from your legs when, when you're doing this lift because otherwise mm -hmm. you can strain your back. Yeah. And from my perspective, I'm just going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to have one hand on the stair above, one hand on the banister, lifting myself. But make sure not to go too fast. Make sure your assistant can keep up. The way I do it is I put one arm underneath Craig's knees and then I hold his trousers just to, together just below the knee and that gives me a good grip to hold on to for pushing. Mm -hmm. Now there's different levels of, of assistance that your assistant can give here. Depending how high they lift your legs will make it easier for you, but it also might tip you over backwards if they overdo it. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you communicate and let them know how much help you need. Ready, Claire? Yep. Okay, ready, lift. One. And again. Two. Okay, and one more. Three. Stop there. Um, so one other thing I often do when helping Craig is at the same time as lifting, I also push him back at the end mm -hmm. of the lift to make sure his bum gets back on the stairs and stops him slipping forwards. Yeah, it just makes my balance a lot easier. So once you get to the top of the stairs, you've then got the worry about getting your wheelchair up the stairs. Now some people, if you're incredibly strong or if you've got some level of lower body movement, can actually drag their wheelchair up with them while they're doing this. But for me personally, I can't do that, so I have to ask someone to carry the chair up for me. Or, in the case of when I'm at home, I have this spare wheelchair which I leave at the top of the stairs. So once I get up the stairs, I can then transfer onto it. Now, unfortunately, there's not much way to get around doing a floor-to-chair transfer at the top of the stairs. Um, but we have a whole video about doing floor-to-chair transfers, including assisted variants, and you can see that right here. So coming down is a hell of a lot easier. You just got to basically slide down the stairs. But again, try to watch out for your bum shearing on the steps. Try and lift yourself forwards and down rather than just sliding. So let your feet go. And down. And down. And down. And down. So one problem you might encounter while you're doing that is if your feet get stuck on the stairs, your legs might bend up and that might restrict you actually going down. So sometimes you might just have to stop and sort of kick your feet out again with your hands, just push them down and carry on. So you don't really need assistance going down, but if your assistant is there and wants to help, they can just grab your legs again and just guide them down. This stops them banging on the way down and it also stops them getting stuck on some of the stairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
down one. And again. I've crashed into the wheel. Down again. And one more. Although you, you failed. Right? <laughs> I failed because the wheel was in the way and there was nowhere for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're at the bottom of the stairs, after you've just come down, assuming either someone's brought your wheelchair down or you left it downstairs from earlier, you then need to transfer back onto it. Now this is very much the same as the first transfer. You just need to get the chair as close to you as you can. You need to turn yourself sideways as you can, making sure your feet are in a suitable position. They're not gonna get caught on anything and they're sort of diagonal. So again, I'm on the second stair, which is roughly the same height as my wheelchair. And I'm gonna use the stair above to give myself a little bit of extra height and make the transfer a little bit easier. So one hand on that stair, one hand on your chair, making sure you've got enough space to move onto the chair. And you're just gonna lift, duck your head forward and, and swivel your hips around so that you land on the chair. So you're ready, like that. And then once you're on the chair, you obviously straighten your legs out and get them back on the foot plate and you're ready to go. So I hope you found that useful. If you like that video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions or comments, remember to leave them down below and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. And if you're new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button to be notified when new videos are released. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.